Okay. Okay. Roll call. Let's bring uh, Improvement Services Committee to order. Let it be recorded. Johnson, Burnett, Nicholson are present. Worry is excused. I need a motion to approve of the agenda. Motion, motion by Burnett, second. second by Johnson. Under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the agenda is uh, confirmed. I need an approval of the minutes. Approved. Motion by Burnett, second by Johnson. Under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Nays. Motion carried. Regular business number one: consideration of possible action request by Alderman Nicholson to create a plan to help relieve water issues at Main and East Mason Street and East Mason Schwartz. Um, reason why I brought this forward: it's been a couple different times I brought it forward over the years. Um, I was just wondering if we can, what we can do to alleviate some of the issues down there, Steve? Well, I guess what, what I would suggest is to refer this to staff for study, and what we can have staff do is take a look at the drainage basin that uh, flows to these two sewer locations, uh, determine what was the original design for that, compare existing build-out conditions to what the original design was, uh, determine whether or not the line is properly sized or not, and then depending on what we find on that analysis, we can make a, a presentation back to the committee and determine whether or not any additional action is needed. Okay. Well, uh, that's good. That's great. Uh, when I brought forward the Schwartz and East Mason Street, we needed a lift station years ago. That's what was a recommendation. And I'm, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know the particulars of that. I'd have to go back and review. Okay. It. That's what I remember. Okay. And basically, with the Packer Stadium tax money that was available, that was supposed to basically pay for that. Well, that actually, this is what I remember. The, the but the problem with the Packer City money, and Mr. Johnson, you weren't there, or Burnett, but I was there, and basically we spent the money on basically everything except for a lot of the infrastructure. And Steve, well, you remember that. There, there was $900,000 that was targeted towards lift station, but that was targeted towards the ones on uh, South Broadway. Correct. And I was trying to fight for one in that area. Right. And for some reason, staff decided uh, with, I, I don't know how you decided that basically have it, uh, the lift stations down on Broadway instead of over in the area I was trying to have one uh, to alleviate the problem. But, I mean, could you touch base with some of the, uh, you know, some of that Packer Stadium money that was, I mean, uh, we could have used some of that, couldn't we? If we didn't pay for Whitney Park, uh, well, we bathrooms. Well, we could have, but that, that, that money was all spent. So. I know. But I remember a communication that uh, myself separately and Mr. Duane, who put a communication is to use all of the money for our stadium, from our Green Bay Packers stadium tax for infrastructure, and it was 12 nothing two different times. I remember that, Steve. Oh, no, 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 no. When, when the various interested parties came forward, that money got divvied up. I know that, but yeah. before that happened, yeah. That's how the council decided it, and I thought, great, we're going to put some money in the city, uh, infrastructure. Um, it, you know, basically, the, the people of Green Bay were overtaxed, so some of it's going to go right into the infrastructure without even raising taxes. But for some reason, special interest groups um, was able to uh, persuade some of our aldermen mm -hmm. to um, redirect that money to Bay Beach, which they received money from our budget anyway, but they got an extra check. Um, I remember the uh, National Railroad Museum got money from our budget, and they got an extra check. And I remember toilets at Red Smith, lights at Whitney Park. I don't know how that helps the people in Green Bay for infrastructure, but for some reason, the, um, that's how the city council decided. Mm -hmm. But no, that's great. These are four concerns that I have because basically, uh, you, you know, you said we're going to look at our drainage basin. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't see anything around there. Where, where is a, a basin to relieve uh, some of that, some no, of that what water? The, what the basin is, we look at the ground contours 
Right. And there's high spots and low spots. So you it's essentially a ring of the high spots that all drain down to that sewer. So any of these okay. areas that come to a common drainage area, that's considered a drainage basin. Okay. Now, Gary Kreischer called me up and he was on the council for uh, 10, 12 years and he yep. had experience with improving services. And here's a, um, some information he provided. He, he stated, and I, and I hope you could look into this, Steve, uh, he's claiming that uh, the information that he provided to me is that uh, when the RDA um, uh, established some of the businesses, they didn't prepare for any of the drainage and our, one of, and basically some of our lines haven't been kept up to date and they're too small. Um, if you, but you're going to be looking into that. If, if that could be confirmed, exactly that would be great. But there's a gentleman with experience, uh, 10, 12 years experience. Um, which is great because he has history of the city of Green Bay and um, he has more more history than I do when it comes to improvement services. So his input was welcome. Um, it, is there any information? Yeah, is the, the retention Alderman pond that's, that's located back behind family video there, is that the, the pond that serves this particular drainage area? Part, part of what serves this area that's pretty far downstream, but yes, that okay. flow eventually does get down to that. So I mean, to tag on to Alderman Nicholson's request, I mean, one of the things that I've heard is that a lot of these uh, flooding problems didn't exist until there was work done on that pond and that perhaps um, the engineering done on that isn't sufficient enough to, to accommodate well, I, a lot I of these water drainage. You, I can tell you a little question, that's not correct. And I'll confirm that be, be, because before that retention pond, I remember that area of Shane Street and um, is that Shane, Steve help me out, State, uh, Shane and Main Street, when you go down Shane, what does that turn into, Fern? No, Hillside. 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 Before that retention pond was created, even a small amount of rain, of a rainstorm or, or a storm, that whole area would be flooded. Okay. But that retention pond did alleviate huge was just huge, really, really, just helped out tremendously. Mm -hmm. But this storm was basically, what did we get that that night? Ten inches in three hours. Uh, numbers that we saw over six? on the east side ranged anywhere from four and two hours to six over six and two hours. And okay, the six and two hours exceeded the thousand year storm event. So do you have power that goes out? I mean, do the pumps go out too? Absolutely. Does it make sense to have backup generators in those things? I don't know if that's a cost uh, thing to do. And how frequent that occurs. Again, it's what you need to look at is a cost of benefit ratio there. Sure. Is that a common thing that's done or not? Uh, on storm, typically not. No. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of our sanitary stations that we do have generator. And a lot of our sanitary lift stations are designed to have generator backup, but we would have to bring the generator out there. There's not a, a standby generator. Mm -hmm. um, storm typically not, and the reason, uh, the reason for that is <coughs> storm flooding doesn't necessarily carry the pathogen load that sanitary does. So sanitary is a much more immediate threat to human health and welfare. Uh, so you want to get your hands around a sanitary issue a lot quicker than a storm issue. Okay. But, um, I'll go ahead. Well, I, I think just this dialogue, you know, it, it kind of piggybacks off of the conversation that we had at the last meeting. Um, and, you know, and that was the need for a capital improvement plan that's looking out at least five years. I just came from finance committee and you know, and that's one of the, the conversations that was being had there is from a budget perspective, I mean, our bond rating is, uh, has been downgraded. Um, we're in a tough budget cycle right now. Uh, we have the need for making some major improvements in our, um, in our infrastructure within the city of Green Bay, and it seems that nobody's got their arms around what our financial situation looks like for the next five to ten years. And I think that, you know, anybody that, that plans in a household, whether it's for your furnace, your roof, your hot water heater, uh, you plan and expect certain expenses are going to occur at any given time, and um, it just seems to me that as a city, 
we haven't been looking at that. And I know that's not your fault, Director Grenier, but it's it's one of those things where I think we've got to start having that conversation. I realize this isn't the Finance Committee, but certainly this is the committee that deals with infrastructure, and we've got some major challenges that the people are calling for some improvements. And if, if paying for that is the problem, we've got to get these departments in sync so that we can figure out how we're going to make these investments because I've got a lot of flooding that goes on in my district as well, and I don't know what to tell these people. I mean, it's, I mean to, to go back to them and say, yeah, we know it's a problem because, you know, you're, you're in a floodplain or um, we don't have adequate equipment just isn't a good answer. And, and so we, we have to know, I mean, look, this is the total scope of the, the challenge that we're looking at, and we think we can fix it in five years, 10 years. It's going to take 20 years. I don't know what that number is, and you may not even know that answer right now either, but I, I think it's something we need to be looking at. Some of it. If you want to have a tough conversation, we can start the tough conversation tonight. Some of it you're not going to fix. Okay? We get 1,000-year storms, we're going to have flooding. We get 100-year storms, we're going to have flooding. I can't stop that. We get 50-year storms, you're going to have flooding. Our storm sewers are designed on a 10-year storm basis. Now, okay, Steve, designed for a 25-year storm, designed for a 50-year storm. Not that easy. I've got 500 miles of storm sewer installed across the city of Green Bay, all designed on a 10-year storm. If I design upstream pipes at a higher capacity, the downstream pipes are going to create a choke point. In order to upgrade all of that storm, I'm going to have to rip out all the roads that are on top of it. So we're talking about an investment in the roads. Now let's say just for the sake of argument that some benevolent benefactor comes and bequeaths all the money in the world I need to do that. A lot of my storm sewer outfalls are currently underwater. We've got high water conditions. River's up five feet over where it was a couple of years ago. So under low water conditions, those outfalls are submerged. Now they're submerged five feet more than they normally are. If the water is higher than the discharge elevation of that pipe, water can't get out of the pipe. If I build a bigger storm sewer to stop it from coming out of the ground, I gotta bury the pipe deeper, which is gonna put it further underwater, okay? The engineering behind this thing compounds itself. You build a bigger pipe, you gotta put it deeper. You put it deeper, it doesn't, it, less water that's getting out right now is gonna get out with a bigger pipe. So all you did was created a 20 minute storage capacity within the pipe until water has to build up pressure to push that water out again. Okay, it, there's no easy answer. And then, God knows how many millions of dollars get invested to do that, and I've only brought this thing up to a 25 year storm. Well, we get a 100 year storm event, which the last two storms we got, the one that we got at the end of August uh, was a 250 to 500 year event, and the one that we got September 17th was a 500 to over a thousand year event. I'm not going to stop that. Those, they, those, we're still going to flood. I don't think anyone here is looking for an easy answer. I think we're just looking for a answer. And, and I mean, Alden Nicholson's brought up here. He's got an intersection there and probably others that are frequently flooding. I mean, I, I mean I've got some, some streets and again, my district where it's multiple times a year. And for me to go back to these people and say, I'm sorry, the only answer is you're going to have to deal with it that your basement's being flooded and causing you thousands of dollars of damage every year. I just don't think that's an okay response as a municipality. And so again, I, I'm not looking necessarily for an easy answer. If there's, a, if there's an answer out there that's a little bit difficult and something we have to reach for, I think we've got to start to plan for it. But, but this goes back to some of the other, the other committees that we have here, including Finance Committee. And right now we're, we're dealing with this on an annual basis and we're not looking any further beyond that. I don't know how any successful organization operates that way. And, and, and so for us to start having five-year, ten-year conversations about what this looks like, and, and I mean, that's when you start to solve difficult problems. Well, I, I think that's a little bit of an oversimplification. Just because we don't have a formalized, written five-year plan doesn't mean we're not planning out that far. Okay, we... Well, then how do we see this plan? Well, I mean, we haven't, again, we haven't formalized and put that plan to paper and brought it forward in front of the council because it changes year to year. Well, that's okay. It that's changes. what five-year plans do. It changes within the course of a single year. That's what that's what plans do. They change. I mean, I have a five-year strategic plan for my organization that changes multiple times a year. 
I do a six month forecast and I do a three month forecast every single year based on things that change. I mean, and again, that's that's not you. That's coming from, that's got to come from the top. That's got to come from the finance committee, whoever sets that prerogative. If that's got to come from council, I think, you know, Alder's got to have that discussion. But for us to, to be walking blindly into this and not say, saying that we've got a plan, it's just not written down. I, I, I mean, what am I supposed to tell the people in my district when they've got flooding routinely? We've got a five-year plan, you just can't see it. It doesn't, you know? I just, I, I don't know. I don't think that's an acceptable response to the residents of the city. Anything else, Alderman Johnson? No, I'm good. Uh, Steve, I don't know if this is one of the problems, but with all the new construction that was in that area, like Arby's, North Shore Bank, there was another bank, Family Dollar. I mean, there, there's a lot of blacktop. That's when I when I said and I know that's was part look at the original design right. and compare the existing conditions to what the original that's exactly what we're going to look at. I know and I thank you for that because I see and I'm not an engineer but I see with all that new construction all that blacktop I don't see any type of retention pond or any type of improvement to relieve some of that water and right. I could be totally wrong but I when I saw that and also that parking lot over by um, the Chinese restaurant, that's part of it also. Mm -hmm. And that, there were some issues with that parking lot when I met with Mr. Larson in the uh, engineering. Okay, um, well. But that was years ago, but it, with yeah. all this new buildup, I, and you have that on your on your paper, which yep. is great, you're gonna be looking at it. Um, I just see, I just see maybe that was some of the problems right there. And I'm, I'm not sure what went in. And I'm getting, I'm, that's just by, what I see. No, no, by Familia Dental and the RV. Right. Uh, if you look right off the edge of the parking lot at the Family Dollar, during the last two events, during the one in, in August, uh, there was a white car that wound up. Right. People had to get rescued. Correct. The reason for that is because she drove off the parking lot into the pond. It's a dry pond. It doesn't retain water all the time. Okay. So some, with our stormwater management ordinance, anytime that new development comes in or redevelopment, that's why right. we require, as part of these things, you know, that should be depending on the size of the development. Um, that's what our stormwater management ordinance does is requires people to put that in. But we're going to look at that. I mean, is that, is that enough? And, yep. and <coughs> is that sufficient enough? I should say. Yep. No, I'm glad you're looking at that. I got a list of what you're going to be looking into. Now, when you mention that that storm in August, I mean, w to me that wasn't much of a storm compared to the, the the one in September. It wasn't as bad. Right. It came out somewhere around a 250, depending on where you were, 250 right. to 500. But still, that that area that I'm mentioning still flooded. Oh yeah. I mean the two. And yep. I think I feel that the city can at least take care of a storm to that substantial effect. Uh, I know there's some issues that we we just can't deal with because it's Mother Nature and it's way too much. Okay, that's fine, but I think there there's room for improvement. Okay, there has to be. So, but it's good that we start the conversation. Yep. I don't know. I think this is my third or fourth time in that area, not specifically Maine and Mason, but Schwartz and East Mason, that whole area. So thank you. I appreciate it. Any other comments from all well, others? Alderman um, oh, Sawyer. Well, I was just going to mention. I mean, I <laughs> my daughter lost her car in one of the floods. So I, I I see, you know, District Nine, District Ten, parts of my areas. I see these happening. We need. I really feel I agree with you, Alder Johnson, that we have to look at this in the long term setup. I mean, I worked in a planning office here for 25 years. Plans change. You know, but you have to have something in place that you can look at and go down the road. Granted, with the, you can't predict Mother Nature, but with that being said, we, there's got to be a better way. So we I definitely will be looking at things Thank in that order. Thank you. Alderman Burnett? There is a member of the public who would like to make comments and would like to open, make a motion to open the floor to hear from you. motion to open up the floor by interested parties, by Burnett, second, second. by Johnson. We're under discussion. Um, I have a comment, but... I, all in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Okay, the floor is now open. Uh, just raise your uh, hand, um, state your name and address for the record, and I will uh, address the, any concerns or questions you have.
Yes, ma'am. I'm a resident of the 845 Bader Street. Okay. And um, I only moved in there seven weeks ago. Okay. And in the short period of time I've been there, there have been fans and room fresheners in the hallway, right by the garage, and there's been dampness in the garage, so obviously somebody knew there was a problem. I had a brand new car that was flooded and totaled. I've been out of my apartment for three weeks. I have had, I have a $700 vet bill from boarding my cats and I have no place to live and I've been off of work for three and a half weeks because of this flood at Main and Mason. Um, the landlord has made no, no efforts to make any kind of help. Um, Who's the landlord? Premier. They're Thank you. Brook, they're out of Brookfield. Brookfield the Dubs, guys. The president is Casey Duffy. Could, could you sit in the front row? So, you know, come on, in. please. So I can, if I, if I could, Chair. Um, there's a sensitive situation where she does not want to be identified. So if the media could refrain from recording her. Is that okay? We, we talked with her beforehand. Okay. Oh, you did? Thank you. Yep. 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 It's just having a little trouble hearing you. You're you just soft-spoken and nothing wrong with that. I just want to make sure I, I get a clear message, Thank please. You so much. Thank you. Just come over here. I specifically, I had a brand new car and I specifically moved to this area because it was a security building and it was underground parking. Um, clearly, the management must have known there was a problem because on two to three different occasions, there was some dampness in the garage and there were fans set up in the hallway along with room fresheners. Um, this storm has devastated me, I have lost like I say, three weeks worth of work. I'm looking at a $700 vet bill to ward my cats, and I lost a brand new car. It was totaled. Um, I would like to know, I guess as my alderman, um, it doesn't seem like I have any, any, any action that I, I can even take, and it seems like the management knew that there was a problem. I mean, had I known, I certainly never would have moved in there. I moved in there because it was a security building and it was underground parking for a new car. And I listened to the meeting. I saw this man on, on video. I've listened to you and I'm, and, and I'm sure that everybody in my apartment building, um, they're, they're very, there's many that were very elderly. We were taken by ambulance to um, a church for a shelter and after two days, the Red Cross said, good luck to you, you need to find your own accommodations. I've been in touch with the Red Cross, I've been in touch with Brown County. They don't have very many answers to help me. I have no resources. And it's been, to say devastating is an understatement. And I listened to the budget. Um, I'm an educated woman, I owned a business for 24 years. I'm not unfamiliar with when a storm sewer can't handle things. I had a flood in my business, and the insurance <coughs> company cut me a check for lost inventory. I'd like to know who's going to help me with this situation. I mean, I've, 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 I, th this has been financially devastating. I've listened to you, and I'm, I've never met you. I've never seen you. I'm pleased that you're my alderman. You seem to be representing us well but it seems like there's been misappropriation of funds. But more than that, the developer knew. They knew that they were building in an area that was prone to floods. And six inches of rain, I mean, I have to tell you, I saw the garage. I went past the garage. The garage was filled with sewer water and gasoline from all the cars all the way up to the ceiling. There was over six feet of water. So you're telling me that six inches of rain fell and that was able to fill up a garage of that size for six feet? Turns out that, that, that Ellis Creek was under there. I went online, I saw the video, I saw that there was a manhole cover, okay? I mean, when the, the, when the development was built, there should have been consideration. There should have been major consideration for building an underground garage, knowing it was on, on, on top of a creek. I don't, under, I don't understand 
that the city of Green Bay didn't allocate the appropriate funds. I don't understand where, um, where the responsibility of the engineering comes in in terms of allowing Premier to build on a floodplain with a residential with a resi with a residential building, let alone for elderly people. It's a it's a it's a building for elderly people. All the women that were taken to the shelter are, are in their seventies and eighties. You know, and if and, and I don't have family here. I don't have a lot of friends that have room to take care of me. And I've been out of the house and asking friends, can I can I crash on your on your couch? I've had friends trying to put me up in hotels. I mean, I just don't understand where the city of Green Bay is allow has allowed the the the, the builders to, to do this. I mean, to add insult to injury, I proactively sent rent checks to the real estate company so that they could just deposit them month by month. They had the unmitigated gall, the audacity to cash my October 1st check, my rent check. And I haven't been in my apartment since September 17th. I don't know. I don't know what answers you have for me. I'm coming here representing myself and, and telling you I've, I've got a really serious problem right now. And I don't know where to go to get that addressed. So I came here to this meeting so that you could see and put a face to somebody that's been victimized by a flood that shouldn't have ever happened because of inadequate drainage. That's ridiculous. If you're overbuilding uh, an area, you need to you need to make consideration for how much for how much um, industry is going to go in an area. But this has been devastating, and I'd like to thank you for your time and for hearing me out and just letting you know that this is a, this is this has been a, this is a seriously financial devastating situation. I don't know how I'm going to be able to rebuild from this. I've lost, I've lost so much. I've lost so much. In the, like I said, the apartment building, the people that own the, 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 the building tell me that I have to use my car insurance my, and my, my apartment renter's insurance and good luck to me. And their, their big concession is they're giving everybody new refrigerators because all the food's spoiled. And obviously they're worried about contamination. So like I say, the big concession is a new refrigerator. I gotta tell you, I'm I'm just not feeling it. Just not feeling like that's a large enough cons that's a, that's a large enough consideration. Steve, I got a question. How long have you been with the city? Eleven years. Chris, have, how long have you been? Twenty-eight. Okay, were you here with uh, Halloween? Yes, Mayor Halloween. Okay. One of the problems we have in that whole area, first of all, it, it's a low area. And I'm just stating facts. That whole area is the old trouble, right? And it's all low. And another problem we had, what I understand with the administration back in the 80s, and I believe it was the 80s, Chris, that whole area with 845 Bader and Imperial Lane was all built up during the 80s. And they put in, you're right, way too much construction in that area and it's low. I don't know how they got it through but it was a different administration before I was around and I'm just stating facts on that part. The only thing I can do is try to go forward from here and see what we can do with the city to alleviate that problem and I and before I was mentioning I saw a lot of construction already in, in my time that I, I don't see much relief from all the all the blacktop and all the construction that's just in that Main and Mason Street area. Um, I saw a retention pond over there what we talked about, but obviously it's not deep enough or big enough. Or maybe we need another one. Or better better pipes, better more drainage. But um, you know, I, I feel for you, ma'am. Um, I don't know what to say, but that all that build up was way before my time where you live and I agree. If you, you know where Imperial Lane is and where you live, Imperial's about a block away from you. 
I, I don't know, I, I can't believe the, the, the administration and the older person in that area allowed all that building and all that construction on top, on top of the, um, the creek and all that, and not enough drainage. Um, but what I can do is um, I can talk to the mayor's office and see what options you have to go and use. Um, maybe Alderman Stoyer does. Well, I let, sure, um, I am on council. Um, anyway, I, we just came from finance, and they were talking about, and Brian, you were there too, they were talking about the water main break on Humboldt and the damage done to that particular home and what they're going through. They're going through a, a tough time as well. So they're, the, the committee is looking at something possibly that Eau Claire did. I mean, there's a lot of communities that don't have a backup plan that way. They just, that's the way it is. Eau Claire has done some things. We're studying what they've done where they've given some money, they've had some in-kind service where they had public works or somebody else, some other groups come in and help clean up and do a few things, but also some money's available, but they're looking at possibly a, a, a number amount, and we're still we're still in negotiation on it. The, we're, we actually looked at it at a finance committee today for that particular issue that happened a while back. Were you familiar with that, with the water main break at the house over on the Humboldt area? Anyhow, so we're, that's a possibility that this may be incorporated into that as well. And uh, we just had, we just met today. We're going to be talking about it at City Council on Tuesday. That that, that whole area is a low area. It used to be a farm. Uh, basically, Premier, the landlord, they had to know. Well, you're you're going to put a lot of money into a development like that. You know. I can't believe time. someone they are would claiming, even know. They're, cla they're claiming no responsibility for this. Well, that, that, that I can't, I mean, that I don't know. I wouldn't be able to comment on. But, I mean, if someone's going to put in a lot of money, you look at low areas, high areas, clay, sand, how to do it. I mean, they know better. And I think that's a fair statement. But, uh, like I said, I can refer you to the mayor's office and see what kind of help we if the city could provide or direct you in the right path, if that's okay. I mean, I can do that for you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks for coming. Do you have any other concerns? Yeah? Comments? Okay. Anybody from, any questions? Okay. Return to regular order business. Oh, is there anybody else that wants to speak? Motion to return to regular order of business. Motion by Burnett to re return Second. to regular order of business. Second by Johnson under discussion here. None all in favor. Nays, okay. motion carried. Okay, uh, probably just a motion to refer to staff. Correct, Steve? With, with all the options that you're providing. Motion by Burnett, second by Johnson under discussion. Here, none all in favor. Nays, motion carried. Two, consideration of possible action on the request by Alderman Weary to review how sidewalk replacements are funded, held over by September 27th. Proven services. I, Chris isn't here. Can we just hold it over? It's no yeah, big issue. Motion to hold for the next meeting. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by uh, Burnett under discussion. You're not all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Three. Uh, consideration of possible action on 2019 Department of Public Works Storm Water Utility Sanitary Sewer District and Parking System Division Non Levy Equipment Acqu Acquisition Plans. Director Grenier. Uh, we have included in your packet a copy of the Vehicle Acquisition and Capital Expenditure Plan uh, proposed for 2019. This is something that we bring to you separately. Uh, from the budget each year. Um, this year, I think one of the things that you'll notice is the only divisions who are represented on this uh, are the Sanitary Sewer uh, District, the Stormwater Utility, and the Parking Division, because all three of those divisions are off levy. They do not re uh, receive any taxpayer uh, levy support. Um, Normally, we would also have uh, operations, traffic, and engineering, which are levy supported. Uh, however, there's already been a decision made uh, to eliminate all equipment 
uh, new equipment, equipment replacement, and capital equipment uh, from the 2019 budget. So the levy supported uh, equipment is, is not being brought forward this year. Um, with these, um, these three funds, we have a line item in each of the three budgets that's called, referred to as the city equipment usage fund. So every time a piece of equipment rolls, there is a chargeback for that piece of equipment that essentially we charge ourselves. Um, that pays for a variety of things such as gas oil lubrication, equipment repairs, and then a portion of that money is then also put into a capital reserve fund, and that cap reserve fund is utilized to purchase these pieces of equipment. But uh, because those pieces of equipment are lumped together into a larger fund balance, we bring this line by line item to show you exactly what pieces of equipment are approximately how much they are going to cost uh, for review and approval. Uh, as a separate motion. So we're just simply bringing that forward tonight to the advisory committee of our intent uh, and gain uh, concurrence from the committee. So what are you looking for, Steve? Uh, what we'd be looking for is uh, approval of the capital expenditures, equipment expenditures for the non-levy supported acquisition. Any questions or concerns? Would you approve? Motion by Burnett to approve. Second by Second. Johnson under discussion. You're not all in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carry. Four, report the award of contract raising buildings for Webster Avenue Reconstruction Group 1 to the low responsible, responsible bidder, Badgerland Demolition and Earthwork. Incorporated in the amount of seventy-four thousand two fifty-eight, Director Kinnear. At our last meeting, you granted the authority to staff to go ahead and uh, approve that award of contract. Uh, we did receive four bids for the demolition. This is for the first, I believe, nine. First nine. The first nine board. homes on the east side of uh, Webster Avenue as part of the Webster Avenue reconstruction project. Uh, low responsive bidder was Badgerland Demolition uh, in the amount of 74258 which I think if you look at the other bids, that was a very good bid. So we were very pleased with that and staff has awarded that contract. We're simply reporting that action back out to you as requested uh, when you gave us the uh, authority to award. Any questions or concerns? Receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file. By Burnett, second by Johnson under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Five, possible action or consideration with possible action on the review and award of the contract Parks Project 3 18 Bay Beach Giant Wheel Project. Director Kinnear? We had hoped to bring this forward. It was supposed to open actually today at 2. However, last week we noticed that there were some issues that needed to be addressed by addendum. Uh, issues were significant enough that we felt it necessary to extend the bid by one week. So we're requesting that you hold this item and we'll bring the uh, the bids in at our next regularly scheduled meeting. Motion to hold. Second. Motion to hold by Burnett, second by Johnson. Under discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, motion carried. Six. Consideration, possible action, and authorized payment for the following easement. West Walnut Street to South Ashland Avenue traffic signal equipment. Parcel 3-73. Bonnie Nickvist. Nykvist? Nykvist. $300. Director Gunier? Uh As part of our traffic signal 2018 program, one of the intersections that we are improving is the intersection of West Walnut and Ashland Avenue. Uh, if you're familiar with that, uh, pretty tight right away over there. So the house that's on the southeast corner uh, is Ms. Nyquist's property. We need to acquire a small easement um, about five feet deep uh, and 30 feet wide on the West Walnut Street side. That is a permanent limited easement to allow the traffic signal pole to be installed there. So as the name implies, it's a permanent easement. We're allowed to maintain or occupy that property uh, in perpetuity. 
but it's very limited in scope. It's only to allow that traffic signal equipment to go there. We can't take it over and put sewers or anything else in simply for the traffic signal equipment. Um, in addition to that, around the radius and then about 30 feet south of uh, the radius on the Ashland Avenue side, we are also seeking a five foot wide easement there. That's a temporary limited easement. The easement automatically expires upon the completion of the project. That is for sidewalk restoration. Again, our policy, uh, city's policy, we install the sidewalk approximately six inches within the right of way. That leaves us a six inch buffer so we can com complete sidewalk repairs uh, without going on to private property. In this case, we're right up against the right of way. So in order for us to get in, do the sidewalk repairs, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that with the grades out there, we're gonna have to do some vertical uh, modification of the sidewalk as part of this project. So we need a five foot wide strip so we can get in there, get the sidewalk installed correctly, and then we will restore her property to like her better condition. But because we're moving on to private property, we do need her permission uh, to do that. So staff does recommend approval of this. Uh, Ms. Nyquist has already uh, authored, uh, indicated her uh, Concurrence with the easements as, as explained to you. Alderman Burnett. Steve, is that the house with the artificial like turf? Yes, I believe that's the that's case. Okay. Thank you. It's been there for a long time. Yeah. Alderman um, Johnson, you have any questions? No. You're right, right about being a tight right away. That's a tight corner. Yes, very yes, sure. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Burnett, second, second by Johnson under discussion. Here, none. All in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Seven, consideration of possible action on applications for concrete sidewalk builder license by the following. Green Bay Concrete, Wood Sewer, and Excavating Incorporated. Staff recommends approval on both. Entertain the motion. Move to approve. Motion by Johnson Second. to approve. Second. Second by Burnett. Under discussion. Here none all in favor. Aye. Aye. Nays motion carried. Eight, consideration of possible action on relocation claims for the Webster Avenue project and authorized payments. Director Grenier. Uh, we have a series of relocation payments uh, that are necessary for the Webster Avenue construction project. Uh, we are looking at parcel 1A, Robert Richmeyer, 708 North Webster in the amount of $8,550. Parcel 1B, Katie M. Long, 708 North Webster, $1,560. Parcel 2C, Sherry Clean, 816 North Webster, $1,140. Parcel 12, James Sudzinski, 714 North Webster Avenue, $600. Parcel 13, Beverly T. Moser, 1102 Harvey Street, $375. Parcel 18A, July and Ramiro Martinez, 1102 North Webster Avenue, $8,000. I don't know. I can't remember uh, the previous one, parcel 13. I wanted to make sure that I didn't say North Webster. It's 1102 Harvey Street for 375. Uh, parcel 20A, Nicole Robertson, 1002 Reber Street for $8,000. Parcel 22A, Ronald Torger, 1005 Burner Street, $5,072. Parcel 23A, Brian Sharkey, 1000 Klaus Street, $8,000 and parcel 24A, Don Lecker, 1008 Vanderbrack Street for $1,140. As with all of the uh, real estate actions that have been taken for the Webster Avenue project, uh, the DOT process has been followed. All of these numbers have been reviewed and vetted through two layers at the DOT, so staff does recommend approval. Questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Approve. Motion to approve Second. by Burnett, second by Johnson, under discussion. Hear none, all in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carries. Okay, public hearings, none. Correct. Informational, what do we got? Okay, just a couple Directors of updates. Directors report on recent activities on Public Works Department. Grenier. Uh, a couple of that updates for you on what's going on with the department. Uh, it's already uh, October 8th, October 9th today. So as much as we don't want to admit to it, uh, we're already looking around the corner of what's coming within the next month or so. So staff 
in street sections, uh, taking this opportunity to calibrate our spreaders uh, before we have to install them uh, in the in the trucks for ice and, and snow management. So we're getting all our calibration done and getting that equipment prepped uh, prior to actually installing it in the trucks for winter operations. Leaf collection, fall loose leaf collection, starts Monday, October 15th. So we've had put that out uh, with social media and press releases uh, for the past two weeks. Uh, I had a meeting yesterday relative to our radios. Uh, one of the things that I think is, uh, is not well known, uh, the radio communications between vehicles, between vehicles and, and the shops, um, when the FCC went through their upgrades a couple of years ago, we had to move to different frequencies than what we did in the past, and there's been some challenges associated with that. So, um, Randy Frailing, our communications technician, phenomenal individual, really, really talented in his field, and we're going to be sorry to lose Randy when he retires next year. Um, Randy's been doing a lot of work on getting us into a process where we can properly migrate away from the old radio systems, which FCC does not allow us to utilize anymore. Uh, and we've evaluated a, a variety of different technologies that are in the UHF band, VHF band, uh, and digital band. So we, we're actually moving DPW into a digital uh, radio system. Uh, Randy's about 60, 70 percent uh, of the way through with the programming issues. We started deploying the first assets and we anticipate having DPW completely moved over to a digital system uh, by the end of this calendar year, street section is the first one to move over so that we can have uh, street assets working on a digital system before snow plowing is necessary. Best thing about this new system, and this is uh, the council approved the radio upgrades as part of last year's budget. Um, with the digital technology and the repeater system that we've got installed uh, across the city, one of the things Randy is telling us is the dead spots we had in our radio coverage uh, under the old systems are largely being eliminated. So we've got a lot better coverage. We'll be able to communicate in real time with assets and not lose touch with folks uh, like we had in the past. So um, got a lot of money that we spent on the radio upgrades because of the FCC conversion, but the good news is everything's going very smoothly and it's actually going to uh, result in a better radio system for us to, to keep in contact with our folks. Uh, relative to the flood that happened on September 17th, uh, as you are aware, we did identify that for flood damaged items, uh, the city was going to offer uh, some curbside pickup of that material for the uh, for the time period of about one week. As of today, we have collected in excess of 175 tons of material. That's well in excess of $8,000 in tipping fees that the city has incurred as that. All properties that we have picked up from have been noticed. People got a tag when we picked the information up. Now we've gotten some confusion relative to the tags because the tag indicates you may be charged. And when we've been talking to folks, what we've told them is if it is determined that you place material that's not flood damaged, you might be charged for that because as I'm sure you, it doesn't surprise you too much, some folks have decided to try to take advantage of that program as a third fault collection. Um, by and large, things have gone pretty well. Um, we are taking photographs of every pile that we're picking up uh, for the purpose of documenting. And I've actually had a couple of folks write into me already just since they got the tag, the, no invoice has been charged. Uh, and they've come forward and said, Steve, it may not look like my pile was damaged, but here are pictures of my basement. If folks have that information, by all means, we're willing to take a look at that. Um, even if we do issue a charge and somebody wants to dispute that, uh, the, the standard uh, appeals process is available to everybody. So we just want to make sure that the alders are aware of that as well. How much staff time, I mean, are we spending to save ourselves potentially a few bucks on ticket charges? Or are there other expenses involved with this pickup that I'm not aware of? Because I'm just thinking about all the staff time involved to take pictures, to tag, to respond to complaints or concerns. It's also our staff time out in the field that gets billed back if it's not flood damage items. Okay. All right. So that's that's my director's report. Okay.
Motion to receive and place on file by second. Burnett, second by Johnson. Under discussion, here none. All in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carry. October 31st is our next uh, meeting. Is that okay with everybody? I'm done coaching and I'm roughing it until yeah, yeah, Was that the regular? Well, normally we we have a fifth week in October, so that's right. There would normally what we would do is take it the Wednesday before our next council meeting, which would put it on October thirty first. But Halloween's a holiday. Absolutely. <laughs> Jesse doesn't want to hand out candy, so he'll be gone. <laughs> but I like scaring <laughs> kids. He wants to eat it. <laughs> yeah. So I think what we can do is we can leave this for right now and Alderman okay. Nicholson, if you want to contact I'll me. I'll touch base with Worry and Johnson and Burnett. And yeah, normally we don't like to have, I, I think the prior week, I would have to check, I don't think, I think. Um, the only thing is maybe had contracts or something. Right, uh, but I think, I think personnel finance they're going to meet on the 30th because I believe that's the Joint Personnel Finance Committee meeting prior to yeah. to hear the budget. So um, I know I have a, a prior commitment. We are looking at doing an expand, a possible expansion of the I-43 industrial park. But we are definitely doing a TIF funded project for infrastructure development out there next, uh, next year. And I have a meeting scheduled with the property owners out in TIF 12 on the 24th. So, you know, depending on what the agenda is, you know, Jim and Chris can definitely take the meeting, but I won't okay. be available on the 24th. Uh, however, the 23rd is definitely going to be available because the Personnel Finance Committee wouldn't be meeting on that Tuesday, so that might That's be an fine. option as well. But again, I'll call, I'll I'll call the everybody. President and I can meet and discuss. Yeah. In the meantime, let me know. That's intriguing. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Burnett. Second by Johnson. Second. Any discussion here? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Just looking at my calendar, Andy, I can tell you that I will be out of town on the 23rd. Okay. Well, we won't have it then. Um, is the 24th okay with you?